This is Jaron Boswell, co-worker. Got Brian, Brian Cruz. Cruz. Julie Cruz. Julie Cruz. All right. They're live people. All right. They're live people. All right. Howdy. My name is Cameron Moore. Um, I am a mission systems operator on the E3 AWACS. Um, and this is Make C2 Great Again. Now imagine, would you fly on an aircraft from the 1950s that's prone to breaking in new and exciting ways? Did I mention it dumps fuel like a champ? Well, this is the E3 AWACS, and it's a miracle that it still flies to this day. Let's start with the reliability. Oh, let me backtrack. Here's the things we're going to talk about. E3 reliability, the E3 replacement, feature of C2, and what actions can you take? According to the Government Accountability Office, the E3 only maintained one-third of its mission-capable goals in 2021, meaning only one-third of the time that it takes off, it's fully capable to accomplish the mission. The engines are also the same engines from the 1950s, so no one makes parts for them anymore, and so it costs the taxpayer around five times as much to forge non-existent parts for an obsolete aircraft. According to Congressional Research Service report, replacing the E3 has been on the table since 2003. It was canceled in 2010, uh, and then reopened in 2017. Congress has pushed the aircraft past the Boeing recommended shelf life of 27.4 years to 45 years this past March. I personally have experienced uh, sudden loss of cabin pressures, engine failure, uncommanded yaw, and uh, many other in-flight emergencies that force us to land wherever is closest uh, in order to prevent crew to the uh, in order to prevent harm to the crew. Uh, and then if we do take off, uh, there's always a chance of radar not working kind of making the whole flight pointless. I told my wife and kids I could see the E3 crashing within the next year, um, whether it's me or one of my friends, but uh, we have to do what we have to do to support our families and our country. So, what can be done? Douglas P. Wickert, head of the Department of Aerodynamics at MIT, assesses that the next generation of the AWACS mission could be from a space-based radar platform uh, and documents on how it could be feasible. The US Space Force has also disclosed that it is developing a low Earth orbit satellite constellation to use in conjunction with the AWACS mission. This solution may come much later in the future at the speed of bureaucracy, but uh, fixing our readiness problem now could be as simple as just replacing the airframe altogether considering aggressor countries also have satellites that could degrade and destroy our satellites. The big answer has been to replace the airframe, but with what? According to the Congressional Research Service, they narrowed it down to three options. You've got the SAW Global I, yes, the car maker, uh, the IAI ELW 2085, mouthful of letters and numbers, and the Boeing E3 Wedgetail. The SAW Global Eye has the same capabilities as the E3 AWACS, except it also has uh, self-defense capabilities, uh, such as flares. So you can actually deter uh, missiles coming at us, basically. The IAI has the same capabilities, except it can only fly around nine hours, uh, whereas we could fly way more with aerial deploy. The Boeing E3 Wedgetail Made in America has all the same capabilities and more of the AWACS. It's kind of been the go-to pick, uh, and we'll see why in a second. Many countries, including Australia, Turkey, and the United Kingdom, already employ Wedgetails as their main C2 platform. According to the Royal Australian Air Force's website, the Wedgetail is a modified 737 with long-range surveillance and communication capabilities. It can detect targets approximately 250 nautical miles away with its MESA radar. Uh, 
These jets are so common, in fact, in the civilian sector that parts are very, very plentiful and way cheaper to obtain. So the reliability and ease of use would greatly increase our mission capability capacity. So what does the future hold for C2? The thought of one of our AWACS taking off on its own is a small miracle. The new jet would be able to take off on time, complete multiple flights, flights, missions in a single day with multiple crews. All the demand for training and real world operations would be met with more fuel efficient, dependable engines. And maintenance wouldn't have to keep 50 year old parts working at the edge of insanity. Air crew stress level and mental fog would be relieved since the distrust in the airframe and the constant fear of death wouldn't be looming, looming over them. Knowing that we are actually going to fly today with no ambiguity keeps our operational risk management in check and reassures the higher ups that we can 99% accomplish the mission. Lastly, this also upgrades our systems to work with those satellite-based C2 nodes in the future and gives a better operational air picture that generals can use to make decisions to see if we're going to go to war or not. So what can you do to ensure this future? Contact your senators and representatives. You could save the lives of many servicemen and women and save their families from tragedy. My kids could be fatherless within the week if we go down. Also, imagine if the jet goes down into somebody's house or a big company building. The next 9-11 just caused from a deteriorating aircraft that should have been replaced 20 years ago just to save a buck. Here's the things we talked about. C3 reliability, replacement, future of C2, actions you can take to change this course of action. All it takes is a phone call. Is that too, too uh, 